Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury CT3 along with. Along with Saktoth, apparently we just cut out randomly. But yeah, along with Saktoth, who we are going to be casting the Zero K 1v1 tournament for September. First off, with Google Frog versus Vermine, because that's who's here. Hmm. Sorry, Vermine. So yeah, for those of you who don't know, Google Frog is right now the number one player in the game. Yeah, um, can you hear me alright? Yes, we can hear you. Excellent, okay. Yeah, Google Frog's sort of recently taken the spot from God, probably from playing a lot of, uh, just playing more one versus ones at the moment. Yeah, so right now, it's a bit uneven. We have the map, this first map is going to be... What the? First map is going to be contested Canyon. Okay, the first map is going to be contested Canyon. That is a. Well, map I haven't seen much of, although I think. Sorry, I know OBS is being weird right now. Okay, we have an air start from Google Frog, we have a plane start. Okay, sorry, one sec. The Twitch thing is not showing up. Ah, there we go. Finally, got it. Alright, so yeah, we have... I said air start from Google Frog. And jump off from Fails Us. So yeah, we were watching this earlier, actually. It was pre-game. A couple of players were warming up. Sponge and Magman were playing. Actually, I was playing on this map against this Sponge as well. It's... Actually, not bad for. Seems like all factories are pretty good factories. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of lot So, any factory which is a little bit faster, like cloak bot, is a bit faster than um shield bot, and you know the vehicle factories are faster, might do a bit better. But um, it's also there's a there's a there's a straight position across if you first start in the middle. So that means that actually, if you sort of want to you know press down. And, in it with this one of the slower, more offensive factories. Yeah. It's interesting that um, Google Frog's chosen to really rush out the um, planes. I'm not sure whether he's going for a, a really quick win, just to sort of get this out of the way. Well, maybe. I mean, given the size and shape of the map, a plane start does make sense. Because you can just block off the front entrance, and then after that, it's just build planes. But at the same time, it looks like they just built one raven. Yeah, Google Frog built one raven, and that's about it. After that, it's just going through, knocking out the metal extractors, and then winning by attrition from the looks of it. But yeah, just pyros, no puppies, no... Oh, there's an Archangel coming up, but that's going to take a minute and a half. So much for that. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that Vermin has chosen a uh, factory with one of the heavier AA units. It just takes a lot longer to get that up. And he's also chosen to start with a laser tower, which is really not going to be any use at all against the um, raven. Yeah, there are defenders being built up though, so Vermine should be able to handle it pretty soon. But even then, that's mostly just because Google Frog isn't building many Ravens. Google Frog's mostly focusing on economy and just basically building the minimum military required to keep pressure on Vermind. Yeah, I think he's probably relying, especially uh, with that um, with that Archangel coming off, he's relying on Vermind uh, overbuilding AA. Yeah, he's already started a Spider Factory. Google Frog has already started a Spider Factory, so he's already mm -hmm. switching to land. That makes sense. Although, admittedly, that... Oh, that pyro is going to go down, I think, before it even spots it. Although, nope, no jump from Vermind. That pyro goes down, does not spot the spider factory. And Vermind is not even going to know what hit them. Yeah, Vermind yeah. does not know anything about that. Vermind has now invested 550 metal in um, the Archangel. And Google Frog's only invested 300 metal in a Raven. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And if... um. If Vermin continues to make A, he's not at the moment. He's just no, making no. pyros, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, the pyros are going to be the best bet. Pyros, yeah, they're going to be the best bet because puppies wouldn't make cost. Like fleas would just nullify the puppy advantage. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's definitely true because puppies are actually really good against the air. They'd be bad against the um any defenders and things and some defenses, but they'd be really good against the um raven because puppies can actually hit ravens. Yeah, but um. Fleas, he doesn't know he has fleas yet, but uh, Vermin doesn't know that Google Frog has fleas yet, but 
No. Fleas can... Uh, uh, you can't use puppies against fleas. No, you can't. I mean, just... You know, fleas get all over them, and the puppies just, just can't stop scratching. I mean, they're just sitting there, <laughs> just putting their legs on their head, and they just can't do anything anymore. I mean, I yeah. suppose you can get, put them in a bath, but... I don't know. I, I never even thought about that. But Google Fox is way ahead on economy now, just with that single air constructor. Yeah, not to mention... Oh, yeah, flea on Archangel. That's going to be embarrassing. Although, overall... Looks like, there's the, looks like there's the commander there. Yeah, that... Which, um, uh, it's good. Yeah, I know. I was I saw that much, but still... Google Frog using the fleas for scouting at this point, not really going in for any sort of attack. The Pyro is going to spot one of the fleas, but yeah, like, at least the Pyro is going to counter this relatively decently well. Or hold off for some... To th well, hold off to some extent, but Google Frog, yeah, that crane is doing so much work. And everything else is just a matter of attrition. Yeah, Vermin is, um... He's trying to protect his commander with the Archangel so he can continue to expand with his commander. But Google Frog's taken so much territory already. And Google Frog isn't trying to snipe the commander. He's not building up a lot of ravens to snipe at the commander. So really, he should be leaving the Archangel with the army and trying to use his pyros aggressively and protecting them with the Archangel rather than... Which is what, what he's doing now. He's pulling the Archangel back. Yeah, although at this point, I don't think that might be a bad timing. Just given the Hermits and Venoms coming in. I mean, it'll help a bit. The way Raven is coming up. Is it, it's not going to be shot down, though. It's going to move out of the way. Google Frog will not let that die easily. And the Stardust coming up as well. Man, this, pop, this turn has gotten really popular in 1v1 over the last month and a half or so. It's because of its huge advantage from range uh, when it's on a hill. But uh, ah. here's the attack coming in. And the Pyros are getting stunned out, but they're splitting up really nicely. So um, he can't stun... No, he's managed to stun some of them, but there's oh, too yeah. many to stun them all. And the Venoms are and down. And now the Venoms are down. So we have the Hermits he managed to do a lot of damage with that to the Pyros, but... Um, Try not to stop them. Yeah, the, the army is traded basically even now. Google Frog probably can't go in much further. So he's trying to... He's going around, He's probably going to go around the side by the look of it. Yeah, see if there's anything to harass in the northeast. There isn't, but he doesn't know that. And then... Or they don't know that. And then now... Vermont the has... Vermont has made a second day Archangel. What? Uh, yeah. It's... It's... Oh yeah, they have. He, wow. He, he probably expects that Google Frog has enough con economy now. Maybe he's he's, he's right because Google yeah. Frog has enough economy now that he can run both factories. He can run both factories, so he can keep start pumping out shadows again, which forces more AA. But he, he's, so he's built this preemptively, which is almost clever, if not for the fact that he's he's just so behind on territory and so behind on economy that he's going to lose even if he does build AA. Yeah. Well, that our first archangel is going to go down to all these spiders coming in from the north anyway, and the second archangel. Not really much is going to be said for that. The Raven knows to there's avoid that. There's no defense around the side. Um, oh, yeah. Vermin has built up a placeholder, which could be interesting because um, I suppose he's trying to gonna try and use the range. Cause Maybe, but there's a Pyros point actually have Pyros actually have 280 range, while Venoms have 240. So if you can placehold them, you can actually sit outside of their range and kill uh, uh, Venoms using Pyros. Oh, okay, that's a good point. However, I don't think it matters because Google Frog is going from the south as well. It's total pincer in, and that'll just be it. Yeah, Redbacks and Venoms from the south. I think that um, he's just winning on economy right now. But it, just as I said, up up north, the, the, the placeholder just took out a Venom using Pyros. So it is clearly something that um, Vermin can do. He's it's good, bit of, good, good bit of knowledge in Micro that he knows he can use a placeholder to kill Yeah, Venoms. that'll be very handy for next game. Well, possibly for next game. We'll see if it is a jump bot spider game next time. Well, it's a handy knowledge to have in general, I think, for playing spiders as a jump bot. I mean, someone was commenting, um, one of the spectators was commenting that this is a counter factory, that spider is a counter factory to, to jump bots. Yeah, but, that I mean, was given that, thrown out at first. Yeah, given that um, your sort of major source of riot is your, your venom, if, if a placeholder and pyro can counter that, that's, that's actually pretty nice. Yeah, it comes down to micro. It's fairly skilled. Though, admittedly, that's, at this point, economy-wise, not going to be that big of a problem. I mean, Google Frog, I think, is just going to be able to push through. Especially given the fact that as long as these Archangels aren't a big deal, and admittedly, the Archangels do have enough range. Actually, no, they don't. Where they're positioned right now, they can't easily get at the back. They will be able to move to do so, but given enough Ravens, and currently there are three, these Pyros won't last that long. And actually, the south side has been completely destroyed anyway. Yeah, Pyros it's actually... It out and, the oh redbacks are really, really strong there. So if you can afford to use the much slower redback um, as a riot unit, 
Uh, they're actually pretty, really strong against pyros. You can see how that's ripping through them. Yeah, because they have the higher range anyway. Yeah, they do have slightly more range than the pyros where the venom's done. Uh, and Vermin's commander going down. I think after Vermin's commander goes down, Vermin's going to throw in the tell. That's going to drop their middle income down to two, and then it'll be yeah, that'll be game. I or think. No. I mean, it was not two to six, but still, that's that's game. Yeah, I think it was um sort of a foregone conclusion when we when the you saw the economy advantage, but um there's still some nice tricks pulled off by Vermin. I mean, he clearly, I mean, I didn't even even think until I looked at the stats about uh, using placeholders to counter Venoms, but uh, there's, there's not much you can do ultimately. No. Doodle Frog has taken complete economic advantage. Uh, he, it's really the, the bombing, the fact you can bomb the Pyros. You cannot use Pyros. Um, against bombers. There. And then of course Puppies would have been kind of a waste against Spiders. Yeah, if you could have gotten some Puppies in before that, um, and gotten around and blown up and sort of scouted with the puppies. I think that could have worked. Yeah, I think because the Archangel is 11 puppies. That would have been enough. That would have taken out a Raven, no problem. Yeah, or just ignore the Raven even and just kill the Crane because this Crane is taken, if you look at the, the minimap, it's oh, taken yeah. the whole map. It's taken and that's everything. one Crane, too. No, oh, two Cranes, sorry. Mm -hmm. Two Cranes, but still. That's two Cranes. And yes, everything belongs to Google Frog now. Cranes have a very, very poor build power ratio. Build, they build, build power for cost. It's really bad. Well, it's build but, power is um, four to begin with. Yeah, it's build power is four, which is lower than everything else, and it's and it is actually uh, more expensive than other constructors while having one less build power. But it's very fast and it's all terrain, so it's, it's still actually usable. It's very vulnerable, low hit points and stuff and everything. But um, yeah, it's it interesting is. to see Google sort of adapt the air start strategy from uh, just rushing ravens and trying to snipe everything and destroy everything, then get enough ravens to kill the commander, then pack switch into a much more economically focused um, rather than a rush focused air start. Yeah, it's really soft pressure on raven into just everything else. But that's yeah, nice. Using... It's it's kind of a mutilisk strategy in a sense. Like you're not using it to win. You're using it to get yourself some room to breathe so you can expand and then win. Yeah, it's actually. He's using the Raven as a raider, essentially. I mean, what they're doing is taking it metal extractors and it's defending himself against the enemy raiders. It's yeah. basically using the Raven as a raider and then using your constructor as a, as a standard constructor. Uh, but I think it does rely very much on a very early factory switch, which is very strong. It's one of the strengths of, um, of an air start is, is if you can factory switch early because you, then you require the enemy to split their resources very carefully in order to not overbuild one or the other and to do that with incomplete information. Yeah, in yeah. the in the chat, they're, they're they're talking about how to counter that and saying puppies would be a good idea. But yeah, well, I said puppies were good. I pointed out to yeah. Vermine. So if that comes up next game, we'll see. I don't know if it will. I kind of doubt it. It's something that Google Google is very sort of pioneering with the um uh, with the air starts. I mean, it is always something that he has in his it, the plane start. Um, him and Goddard. Was sort of the, one of the first ones to like do it a lot and get it down to an art, and to also, also to counter it though. Um, I remember doing uh, air start a lot against Togato, and he would just put down so many defenders. He would not know it's coming, and he would just put down so many defenders, and I couldn't do anything about it. But it's interesting to see the evolution of the air start into the more economic focus, more more standard, less rushy. Well, that's that just makes sense because I mean, when you're going for a heavy rush like that, that's an all-in. I mean, all you're going to be able to do is attack, and then... Oh, hey, I... I try to kill you. I lose. I, I either win or I lose. That's it. No one wants to play like that. You're just, you're betting the game on a coin flip, or sort of. Yeah, and it is, and it can be... It can put you quite behind if you invest a lot in um, into Ravens, and you don't really slow down the enemy economy, because they will expand faster. But the problem is that it scares the even though Google Frog at no time was threatening, could have even had the capacity to threaten Vermin's commander. It scared Vermin enough that he didn't expand hard with his commander. And one of the things you should do versus an air start, or you want to do versus an air start, is to Massive expand man. as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah, because you can only start snipe one metal extractor at a time. He's not going to come through with a big pack of raiders. That's going to come later. You mass expand as much as possible. That you put down the defenses once you see him transitioning to into a land victory. And that. That is something that actually hasn't really come up a whole lot. I know I, met, I showed a game with Drone where that happened, where 
if a drone pulled that off. But it wasn't... It was something at the time that seemed a little bit surprising. I mean, it seemed... It made perfect sense, and I pointed that out at the time. I was like, well, yeah, of course they do that, because that's the winning strategy. Mm. But it's something that isn't really all that intuitive, because you think, oh, shoot, ravens are everywhere. I'm, I'm going to lose everything. If I move out, I'm going to lose everything. I need to bunker up. I need to make sure the ravens come to me, because I can't chase them. And after that, mm. the other player just mass expands. Because it's really intimidating. You can totally mm. understand why Vermont would have a problem thinking, oh, I should mass expand. It's unintuitive. It makes sense when you think about it, but you have to really think about it. One of the problems is that, um, especially if you have a constructor which is sniped by ravens, is constructor expanding. And the thing is, it's, it's almost faking you out. Because you see one raven, you're like, oh, no, I have to protect my commander. I have to build AA. When it, it, was, just, it was just faking him out. He actually, mm -hmm. what he needed to do, what Vermin needed to do, was actually to raid. Which is, you know, you do not think of an air start as, as the, what you need to do in, versus an air start is to raid him, stop him from expanding. But yeah, just as a, a couple of puppies would have shut down that that uh, air, air expand entirely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been in a situation too, and actually nearly won in a situation like that, just pushing a few glaives in. I mean, I ended mm -hmm. up getting bombed out ultimately, but yeah. it, it gave me a big advantage at first. Anyway, we have Hovercraft versus Amphib on a map with no water whatsoever. How? Actually, that's really interesting. I'm. I'm frankly quite glad to see that. It shows that the factories are fairly useful regardless of water, which is good. Yeah, that, that's, that's definitely true. I mean, it's it, it's a flat, relatively flat, re, flat, relatively small map, and um, hovercrafts are meant to work on flat maps, while um, amphibs are work, meant to work on small maps because they're a slow factory. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of that's meant to be their overlap onto land, their niche that they can play on land maps. So on a small flat map, it makes a lot of sense that they're picking these. Yeah. Yeah, and actually picking Archer as well, which is a little bit risky given the fact that there's no easy way for it to reload, but still makes a lot well, of sense does... given the fact that the daggers can't easily take advantage of their range. And the Archer's pushing them back. You can see how excellent uh, a, a choice the Archer really is actually in this situation. Yeah, oh, uh, although yeah well that's why just... I was about to say, because ducks have a bad tendency of killing each other. Yes, but it's, an, it's, an, oh, it's an amazing nice. riot unit. It's honestly one of the best riot units in the entire game, the Archer. Yeah, at the because, cost of the fact that it has limited ammo. Although, admittedly, that ammo is hardly limited at all. I don't know what I'm saying. That's an entire raid, and it only is at 70%. Well, it slowly regenerates over time. It just regenerates much faster in water, because it's a water tank. Right. So it, it's stronger in water. But even outside of water, it's it's an incredibly strong unit. It can get overwhelmed, but it's it's because it's, the damage is so front-loaded, because it, it both loses range and uh, sort of runs out of damage eventually um, as its water tank runs down. So that when its water tank is full, it has 300 range, heaps of damage, AOE, impulse knockback. It destroys groups of small units. Mm -hmm. And especially when you have the daggers that want to surround you and hit you from all sides to try to take out as many units behind you as possible. Makes even more sense. Just throw them out of position. The daggers are going to have going to start hitting each other if they're not careful. Yeah, it's 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 some. Um, oh, it's disadvantage of course. Is that a lot of its damage is impulse, so it's bad against buildings, but this is what the duck at, which they're raiding right now. It takes two of them, two shots, uh, to kill a, um... Ooh, wow. Or two shots to kill each other, that works too. Yeah. Yeah, um... I mean, really, that's the so one thing about ducks. Vermin has upgraded his commander with a rocket launcher, and it's a ranged commander, siege commander, which is interesting. That's... I'm not surprised at all. Other admittedly, that's maybe because it's something that I do as well. I have a... I have a Siege Commander with Rocket Launcher I like to use against vehicles primarily, but anything where I'm going to have a hard time dealing with it for a long period of time, just keep it at bay. Yeah, it was a blind pick, but it's actually not a bad pick, because against relatively slow um, amphibious units like boys, you need uh, boys, which a Google Frog is built yep. and is numbing through the middle of the map with an archer support to prevent raiders. Um, rockets are pretty good against boys, because they're just not fast enough to dodge, really. Yeah, though they do have the ranged counter, but yes, that dodging is a bit of a problem. It will end up being a bit of an even shot. Down to numbers, really, but at this point, I think two or three boys. Actually, let's double check that. Oh, that's actually quite a lot of health. In fact, three boys would have... A... Actually, if they attack the commander right now, the problem is the dagger support. So Vermind can't really be assaulted. That's the main thing. He needs to expand more, though. Google Fox is already, already expanding to the north, and that's the key. Yes, and that on top of that... Vermind isn't really doing a lot of damage either. I mean, these daggers are all set up in the center of the map. None of them are going around the side trying to spot what's going on. 
I mean, Vermine has no idea. Vermine's totally in the dark at this point, and Google Frog, I mean, both players are doing a good job reclaiming the area around them. They're all taking the forest. Not as so much taking the rocks, but that makes sense. Their energy is re really the bottleneck at this point. Not, neither of them have built power plants, come to think of it. Or no, 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 sorry. Vermont has built three solars, but Google Frog has built no power plants whatsoever. Yeah, he's building constructors as power plants, using them to recline, which is... I, I, I've seen that done before on this. I've done it myself, but mm -hmm. it's in, very interesting because it's quite vulnerable if you lose them or if you get a sudden spike in metal. And that's what I mean, is such. that... If Vermine goes around raiding a bit, they'll find the constructors. There are lotuses around the south and mm. north, but that's just one lotus each. Yeah, in the middle of the map, um, he managed to take out a boy, but uh, he lost almost all of his daggers, which he needs to use his mobility because he's in a f much, f much faster factory. Um, well, was. Hover I mean, is one of the fastest factories in the in the game, basically. Uh, it, I, fastest it, land factories. It is, but at the same time, the daggers are the re and halberds. They're the real advantage maker. I mean, now we have maces and a scalpel at this point. That speed advantage isn't really coming into play very much. Nor is Vermont yeah, using what exists of it. He needed to contain the expansion, even kill the um, reclaiming constructors. Uh, to d destroy the energy economy just by killing constructor. But um, Google Frog has four constructors now. Um, he's taken the, both the top and the bottom, and he's t starting to take... He's building a heavy laser tower both in the middle of the map. He's finished that one and one at the top of the map to secure that area. Uh, so Google Fox creating these very strong controlled centers to push so that he can push his and move his slow units into the enemy then back from the enemy and sort of re repair them and what have you. Yeah, and basically pull them into the turrets and go, oh hey, by the way, I have a turret. I hope you enjoy it. Briefly. He's building the one now, another heavy laser tower in the middle, uh, so he's sort of turret creeping down the map. Wow, that's... But Vermin's almost finished morphing his commander, which should help. Not to mention the Halbers can easily tank a lot of those shots. And they are not in fire mode too. Although, no, they are in fire mode, never mind, they just haven't fired for now. Oh, shoot, one of them just went down as well, rather nullifying the advantage that the halberds present. Seriously, when you're using a halberd, put the fire state to hold fire. Fire when you want to, not when it wants to. Yeah, Vermin is um, now more range than the boys on his rocket commander. But he's, yeah, he doesn't have more range than the um, heavy laser tower. No, which is at 620. So still a bit of a problem, but the boys are forward enough that it's not a big deal. Vermine can actually deal with this. At the same time, the boys just becoming quite daring, and for good reason too. The mace is not going to be able to deal with that, and those halberds—that's all that exists to tank it. Though there's a scalpel yeah, coming in. He has a lot Total of boys range. now. This starts to get the boys sort of—they really eat snowball off of each other. So you tend to get this big ball, and you skirmish back and forth. Google Fog's also creating a um, a caretaker now. That'll both help to reclaim, repair, and to build more defenses. And given the position, I'm assuming he's gonna build, an, or they're gonna build another factory with those caretakers as well. They're quite out of the way, but not so uh, far out of the way that they can get. The back, yeah. hmm? There's a caretaker in the middle of the map as well. Oh and yeah, I mean, that was for me. Vermin just did a nice attack which killed one boy. He needs to do that. He needs to take out boys while just using um, scalpels, while distracting with the halberds, and then going back and repair to slowly whittle down the number of boys. Yeah, and the, but, the scalpels uh, Google Fox is taking, again, an economic lead. Yeah, the scalpels are going to be key for that, though, because the boys, otherwise, they have the repair now, and there's, of course, the reclaim just pushing them even faster. In Google Frog, I'd say about two, if Vermine doesn't destroy these boys in about a minute or two, Google Frog has the game, and the match, actually, because it's been one win for Google Frog so far. Yeah, this is best of three, by the way. Everything but finals is best of three, as usual. Yeah. Vermin really needs to use his... He's building daggers, he's rebuilding more now, but he really needs to use them to go around the side and hit the expansions, not in the middle, because they're really not doing anything against it. There's too many boys now. And there's the commander and an archer. Yeah, so that boy... Well, yeah, that's the thing. He's getting defending us. I don't know if... Vermin is actually doing that, though. Vermin is going for exactly what you suggested, which is going to be a little bit tricky to deal with, because at the same time... That means that Vermine now has to micro out the center, make sure scalpels don't die, as well as making sure that the daggers don't die, trying to get this stinger, and it looks like the daggers are not being micromanaged extremely well, getting, they're struggling up the hill, trying to go for melee striders that don't exist yet. Two daggers have already died for nothing, and the main base, we have fusion plant already built up, the south has been taken, the north has been taken, Google Frog is very well set up, and Vermine, about half the economy so far, and all the daggers once again back to the center, the two that went to the top, Got rid of the conch, but that was about it. Nothing in the north side of the map, sorry, northeast side of the map, nothing in the south of the map. Two daggers going to the south, which will be of more use, but even then, it's still going to be tough. 
And yeah, looks, that is oh, Google Fox plant. That is his first energy structure. He's been in, relying entirely on trees, reclaiming trees, and he built a fusion plant by reclaiming trees. That that is a really good thing to point out because yeah. At the same time, though, more ducks coming in from the north, so we're mind having to play defense. And those daggers that were on the south, not even being used. At, sorry, they are being used to the southeast. Uh, not being used in the straight south, but they are being used southeast, which is going to get rid of one metal extractor. No, not even. Not uh -huh. even one. The thing is, he can't even go up the hill. The bottom hill is actually not part of all the vehicles. The top one is very slowly. Oh. You short saw how the, the daggers struggle oh, yeah. getting up that hill, because that's the disadvantage of hovercraft. But they can't get up that hill at all, not without um, a ramp. So if you do start a vehicle map or what have you on this map, it's a very good idea actually to push with your commander if you're not pushing him to the center, which is another common strategy as you can see Google Fog is doing now. Mm -hmm. But uh, to push your commander down to the bottom of your starting vehicles and create that because uh, it's bot partable. So your commander can get up there. Yeah, yeah. Vermin's commander is now getting shot by the heavy laser tower. There are heaps of boys just sitting under the cover of the heavy laser tower just retreating back into it every single time they get threatened. Well, like I said, it's been a minute. It's been a minute or two, and Vermine did not break this boy line, so that is game. I don't see any easy way that Vermine has to get out of this. The halberds sort of help, but even then, once again, they're still on fire at will mode. So their defenses are going to be pretty much up to chance. They're over right what into the north. Those halberds are just going for it. Looks like... Yeah, I think he's, he's oh, no, going for mind. a last-ditch effort to... No, that's no, no, he knows. He nope. needs, he's pulling back to save his base. That's too late. He's out of position. No, they're out of position. Yeah, that, well, that's, that's game. What he that's game was... Um, was more dagger raids around the side. Even use the halberds to raid around the side because he need to build up a big skirmisher ball in the middle Actually, if he's going to focus on his resources on stopping the boys. Big skirmisher ball because scalpels are better skirmishers than boys are. Yeah, I think scalpel in the center with a couple of maces for running defense. It's running interference with the maces and then going from there with the halberds because the daggers weren't a terrible idea but at the same time with all the defenses in play, especially in the back, but this stinger in the north as well, there was no easy way for anything but halberds to get around the back and actually deal damage. If you had raided with longer. his daggers, in, in the initial fight, he had still, still daggers left over from the raiding phase, as it were. But he used them in his main uh, sort of fight against the archer. And the archer killed... It was really that, that there was a big initial attack with a bunch of daggers as well. And he lost all of those to, an, to archers and to commander. So if he have saved those and just killed the expanding constructors and the reclaiming constructors, which was Google Fog's entire energy economy, I mean, that, and that's a lot easier to take out salt than solar panels, isn't it? You know, it's easier to take out... Yeah, energy. and a lot easier to take out than a fusion reactor in the center of the base. Yeah, well, I mean... Well, the centrality of it. Sort of too late, wasn't it? Yeah, at that point, it's, there's not much to be done. But if That's he was going to stop in the middle, um, he's better he, against pure boy. It's better to just go pure scalpel. Uh, maces are actually terrible against um, against boys. They just get slowed down. They can't catch them. They, the um, boy outranges them by a hundred or by ninety-five. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just like pure scalpel. Who's going to stop in the middle or raiding? Even just a couple, a halberd or two around the sides would probably have been enough because Google was so immobile with the boys in the middle. He was relying very heavily on spooking vermin into not raiding him. Which is working really well. That, that psychological tactic paid off. And I'm just gonna go over brackets. So right now, Google Frog won 2-0 against Vermin, and the Sponge in another game won 2-0 against Lightman. At the moment, we are still waiting for Failthos. I think Failthos might be asleep. I'm pretty sure Failthos is asleep. I think this is like 5 a.m. right now for them, or 5 or 6 a.m. for them. But they still have apparently another 10 minutes or so to get in. So anyway, right now, Failthos and Orphelius is not likely to happen anytime soon. Old Ghost Stalker is also not present. I'm not really sure what is going on. Where... Where is Old Ghost Stalker? That is a big question. Because, like I said, Failthos, pretty sure, is in bed. We could... It'd be nice to be able to summon Lori or... or... Someone else for for Thale, Thalthus is not going to be around because um, Thalthus is um, 1990 Elo, so he's you know he's a high level one of the Swan player. Yeah, I was really hoping to see Thalthus in here too because Thalthus has not really been in a tournament so far, and mm -hmm. Thalthus is a really good player. I mean, especially Thalthus and the Sponge together. Oh, Thalthus and Orphelius can be interesting too. But Thalthus and the Sponge would be a neat game, and then see what go from there. Okay, so it looks like we're expecting 10 minutes of downtime since...
basically after the 10 minutes, we will have subs. Either we'll have subs or Magman and Orphelos will go against each other and that will decide the rest of the bracket. Or sorry, not Magman and Orphelos. It'll be Orphelios and Magman both get a bye. Oh well, I mean, I guess we can't have as nice things as we had last time. Because in July, if, for those of you who were not watching the July tournament, that went extremely smoothly. Everyone, well, with a couple exceptions, came to their games. The games ran in parallel. We had basically as short as possible for 20 people playing. Went really well. But at least in this case, we only have eight people, which is very surprisingly small. Everyone went back to school, apparently, a little bit too stressed out to actually come into a tournament. Hmm. Kind of unfortunate. But yes, there are tournaments every month. Twitch is between 1v1 and 2v2, so next month is 2v2. That'll be in October, and then November will be the next 1v1. And then December we'll be closing out with the 2v2 for the year. Unless we do some thing that's, like, everyone together. All the winners of all the tournaments against each other to find who the winner of the winners is. <laughs> Number two versus one. Yes, the Ivory King style. He played that, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. That was, I think, the first 2v2 tournament. Did he... He lost that, didn't he? Yeah. He, it was on Geyser Plains. He actually did a pretty good job trying, but it was death. It was very death. That was a little unfortunate. However, I still think that... Man, I want, why is Philthos not here? Anyway, we're going to be probably taking a small intermission at this point. Not really sure what to what to really talk about in the meantime or do in the meantime. So stay tuned. We will hopefully have Thalthos and Orphelius or Old Ghost Stalker and Magman. If not, then it'll probably be the Sponge and Orphelius as the next game in the semifinals or Google Frog and Magman. I do want to cast both semifinals and bronze and finals as usual. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back in probably about five minutes.